Ready, set, go. Well, that was kind of anticlimactic. It's a thinking model after all. This is the M1 MacBook Air running GPT OSS 20 billion. I've got a web application architecture prompt in here. Design a scalable web application architecture for an e-commerce platform and it's going. It's doing it on an M1 MacBook Air from 2020. Go, go, go. All right, stop being silly. Let's see what we get. 12.8 tokens per second. Not bad for an oldie like this, which means you can actually run this on budget laptops. And I'm gonna be doing that one, the M2 MacBook Air, the M3 MacBook Air, and the M4 MacBook Air. These are all budget machines that people either already have, or maybe you're a student and you wanna get into software development and you wanna get yourself a MacBook Air, and you're wondering, can I run LLMs on it? It's a hot topic nowadays. I wanna be able to do that. And obviously the answer is yes, but there's one thing I wanna add. This MacBook Air, the M1, has 16 gigabytes of RAM, unified memory, as Apple likes to call it. But sometimes M1s and M2s and even M3s come with eight gigabytes of memory. It's not until the M4s that 16 was the minimum. So can we run small models on this? And what's the point? I'm gonna move over here to the M2 and try to load the same model. Uh, OpenAI is very popular, 20 billion GPT model. And yeah, that's, that's just not gonna happen. We're getting failed to load load the model message here. Even if I relax the parameters here in LM Studio for loading, it's still not going to work. And the reason is simple. Memory is king when it comes to running these. And this machine, well, it only has eight gigabytes of memory on it. Whereas this model is 10 gigabytes on disk. And then depending on how you run it, what context you give it, how many experts you load up, it's gonna require maybe even more memory when it's running. So definitely not going to run. However, there are smaller models that you can run. All right, hold on a second. I know what you're gonna say. Small models suck. No, no, they don't. They don't suck anymore. This is a brand new paper about small language models and the future of agentic AI. So we contend that SLMs, small language models, are principally sufficiently powerful enough to handle language modeling errands of agentic applications. We assert that the dominance of LLMs, or large language models, in the design of AI agents is both excessive and misaligned with the functional demands of most agentic use cases. And this paper goes further into detail how more efficient agentic system could actually be designed instead of using large language models using small language models that are more targeted towards the task that you need for example hugging face small m2 here is a deep seek r1 distill series not the giant one the 681 billion parameter one or is it 671 i forget one of those but the smaller varieties the distill versions of those we're going to take a look at that as well and how that runs on these machines and speaking of this small model I actually have a pipeline, which I commonly use. This is my daily driver. It's the M4 Max MacBook Pro. And I run a pipeline to process videos, you know, videos that I make on this channel. And I add uh, sound effects to them sometimes automatically. And I use that small model to detect where there's a person that appears on screen and when there's a, something else that I'm showing in the video and to automatically insert certain sound effects. Here is the small model that I use. And it's actually a pretty decent one. It's a vision model, so it's going to detect when different events in the video happen. And guess what? This model is only two gigabytes in size, fitting on all these machines. Here it is, leaning on the cheaper, faster side, and also slightly better than the ones that are uh, the little older ones that have been around. So yeah, you can kind of think of a large model like the 70 billion parameter or even the deep seek 670 billion parameter model, like a cargo ship. Everything that you could possibly ever want is in that model. You run it, you query it, and then you get your answers back, hopefully, without hallucinations. That's always the worry, isn't it? But you don't always need to have a cargo ship with you. Sometimes you just want to carry a backpack when you know what you need. Or when I leave my house, I have my phone, my keys, and my wallet. That's all I need. When I'm doing certain tasks programmatically, I may want just a small vision model to be able to determine if there's a person in the frame or not. That's it. And that's what these agentic flows are heading towards. And that's where if you have a small machine, whether it's a mini PC or one of these MacBook Airs, don't fret. 
because you can do stuff. Instead of loading up a giant model and keeping it in memory and being able to do everything, maybe you write your pipeline so that it loads up the model when it's needed and only when it's needed. So these days I'm constantly flipping between models. GPT-40 for notes and email, Claude for code refactors, Flux for image generation, Kling for video, four tabs, four bills, and counting. Enter chat LLM teams. There's one dashboard that houses every top LLM and route LLM picks the right one for you for a given task. O4 Mini High for fast answers, Claude Sonnet 3.7 for coding, Gemini 2.5 Pro for big context, and even adds GPT 4.1 before ChatGPT has it. Chat with PDFs and PowerPoints, then generate decks and docs and do deep research all in the same chat. Need human sounding copy? The humanized toggle rewrites text to beat AI detectors. Spin up agents and run code with AI engineer. I built my first bot in just minutes. Track artifacts, create GitHub pull requests, and debug from the same interface. Need visuals? No problem. Use Flux or Ideogram and Recraft for images, Kling, Luma, and Runway for video all built in. And the kicker? is just $10 a month, less than one premium model. Head over to chatllm.abacus.ai or click the link in the description and level up with Chat LLM Teams. So let's take a look at another model here. We got a couple of newish models and all these are on MLX. MLX is the Apple framework to be able to run things more efficiently on Apple devices, specifically these models. Here is a DeepSeeker 10528Quen3 8B. What the heck does all that mean? Well, DeepSeek R1 is the big model, is distilled using Quen3, which is a pretty popular new uh, ish model. I actually have been using the Quen coder models that are pretty good for software developers. And this is the 8 billion parameter model, which is 4.62 gigabytes on disk. So it'll have no problem running on the 16 gigabyte machine, even if we bring up the context to say 50,000 around there, the context length, that's how many tokens you can shove into it before it forgets everything. So I'm going to start a new chat and get it going. And there we go. It's thinking. It's a thinking model. So it's going to do a little bit of thinking first and then it's going to keep going. I'm going to do the same thing over here. This is the M2 MacBook Air and this one only has eight gigs of memory and it's having a little bit of a tough time giving me a 50,000 token context. It's saying fail to load the model. LM Studio also has these model loading guardrails. Let's turn that off for a little bit and see if we, uh, if we get this thing to load. Not recommended, but let's try it anyway. I'm here to do the not recommended things sometimes. I don't always do that, but sometimes I do. That one's still running the answer and writing this really detailed architecture. So it's pretty cool. All right, here we got it loaded up and I'm going to run the same thing. And it's thinking it's actually working on the eight gigabyte machine. Now you probably won't be able to do much else on this machine. We are pretty much up against that limit. Eight gigabytes total physical memory, 7.52 gigabytes memory used, but it's running. It's all happening on the GPU. You see that in the GPU history chart right here. We got a, a stack of blue lines coming across the screen. And yeah, now we're getting into that memory pressure that's yellow. And sometimes we hit red. I've seen it hit red on this one before. Yeah, it's not pleasant to see that, but it's running. We'll compare the speeds of these in a bit. Is the M1 with 16 gigabytes actually faster than the M2 with eight gigabytes? We're about to do some comparisons and find out. Here's the memory chart of the M1 with 16 gigs. You see that we have a little bit of headroom. So pretty comfortable running on that. Not a problem. Let's try the M3. I'm going to try the 50,000 token context here. And I think it's actually working. This one also has eight gigs of memory. Let's send that in. What's happening here? <laughs> we already have orange memory pressure and we are loaded up our RAM to the max here. Yeah, but it is working. It's actually running. And since the M1 works, with 16 gigs of memory, the M4 is most likely going to work. If anything, it's just going to be doing it a little bit faster. How much faster? Let's find out. Boom. There it goes. It's thinking. It does actually look a little bit faster, but that just could be me. Uh, but look at that memory usage. We are in the green, not even close to orange or red. Lots of memory headroom there. So that's good. You can still use your machine for other things. Whereas on the M2 and the M3, probably not. 
Let's stop all these and see what kind of tokens per second we're getting here, just to get a sense of where we're headed. So for the same exact prompt, same exact model, we've got 20 tokens per second on the M4, 18 tokens per second over here on the M3, 16 tokens per second on the M2, and 12 tokens per second on the M1. Pretty consistent here, but I don't think this gives us enough information. So I wrote a script. Wow, this is the M3 with eight gigs of memory and it's got the model loaded and it's just hard to use the machine. Wow, everything just kind of sticks. Okay, there we go, there we go. <laughs> this script automates running several models on all these machines and it does it multiple times. It takes hours and hours to run these, but hopefully this will give us some idea I'm going to actually look at this on my MacBook Pro. Let's take a look at that GPT model. And this 20 billion parameter model with FP4 quantization only ran on the MacBook Air M1 and M4, the one with 16 gigs, and would not run at all on the two 8 gigabyte models. So if you want to run this model, make sure that you have at least 16, but you really won't be that comfortable with 16. Trust me, you want more than that anyway. But the difference between M1 and M4 is pretty evident. Also, also, I have different kinds of prompts here and you'll notice that extra long prompts didn't even run on these at all. What are extra long prompts? I have a link to my GitHub repository with these, but these are prompts that are code heavy with 17,900 tokens. Here's a extra long repo prompt prompt. <laughs> repo prompt is a tool that I use. It's a pretty neat tool that you can check out that allows you to include a file map of your project with your prompt to the LLMs. And that's what this is. It includes about 45,000 tokens. So neither one of those ran at all. Then we have a long architecture prompt. Some of these are about 2,000 to 3,000 uh, tokens in length. And then we have medium prompts and then short prompts. You can see that the M4 MacBook Air is actually dominating this uh, quite nicely. But if we take a look at some of these long prompts and the medium prompts in the middle, like this one right here, medium programming debugging prompt, the M1 MacBook Air has 13.6 tokens per second and the M4 15.4 tokens per second. So good old M1 MacBook Air keeps up quite nicely here. It's at the extremes that the M4 really pulls away uh, at the really short prompts. Nobody's ever going to do that, by the way. That's like high and things like that. And then this long architecture prompt as well. Now, what are these other machines I have in here just to throw that in there? Well, the M4 Max MacBook Pro. <laughs> if I turn that one on, that just pulls away. And this machine, of course, has a lot more memory. It's got 128 gigs of memory, but that's not the contributing factor here. This is the memory bandwidth. M4 has a memory bandwidth of 100 gigabytes per second. That's very important when it comes to these large language models and small language models in this case. And the M4 Max has over 500 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth. So quite a big difference there, and you can see it here. Now the GMK Tech machine and the Framework Desktop machine, I did videos on both of those. They actually do quite well here much faster than both the M1 and the M4 MacBook Airs. You can check that out for yourself right here. If we take a medium programming prompt, for example, M1 has 11.9 tokens per second, M4 15.6, a framework desktop is 56 tokens per second, and the M4 Max 102 tokens per second on that one. Now, what about that DeepSeek R1 model? And I have a couple other models to show you as well. Here we go. On this model, the M1 and the M4 were both able to run the extra long programming prompt. That's the 17,000 token prompt. As you can see, it matters what model you're running to, whether you have the headroom to be able to run really long contexts. M4 MacBook Air got 4.7 tokens per second. M1, 6.1 tokens per second. The M1 MacBook Air beat the M4 in this case. That's crazy. I think that's the only case where that happened. The really extra long 44,000 token prompt, only one machine was able to complete that, and that's the M4 MacBook Air. And as you can see, the M4 MacBook Air kind of rules this chart quite nicely. Uh, the M2 does really well. The M2 does surprisingly well against the M3. And I will tell you why I think this is happening. The M3, it does not look like a good machine here at all. None of these machines have fans in them, so eventually they come to 
to a point where they're a little bit too warm and I think that there's some throttling going on here. I did not keep track of throttling in this experiment, but I believe that that's what's happening here with some of these. The M4, for some reason, is handling that quite a lot better, but the M3, maybe it was, I don't know, too hot for its hood. And the M2 is doing quite a bit better in a lot of these medium sized to long prompts. Look at the M2 go over here on this long architecture prompt. 16.9 tokens per second versus M3's 13 tokens per second. And by the way, this ran multiple times, not just once. So it can be statistically significant. Let's take a look at the M4 Max here. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. But that's for another video, right? Uh, we're talking about these budget machines here. Just to give you an example of where we stand with these. I don't want to leave anything out. I also ran the two new Quen models. One is a non-thinking model, specifically non-thinking, and the other one is a thinking model. And these are both designed for these kind of agentic workflows. Here they are. They are the Quen architecture and they're coming from Quen. They're both about 2.12 gigabytes in size. One is specifically thinking and one is specifically non-thinking. So the thinking one will always think and the non-thinking one will always not think. It'll just do and then make stupid mistakes in life and then regret everything that it's ever done. Just go to jail and rot. Let's take a look at that non-thinking one and see how it did. I'll remove the M4 Max from the equation here. And yeah, M4 MacBook Air is a really good deal. All these are under a thousand bucks, by the way. But that M4 MacBook Air is a 16 gigabyte version under a thousand bucks, which is different than all these other ones. I'd say that's a pretty darn good machine right there. Look how well it does. Medium architecture, 32 tokens per second in the non-thinking Quen 3. The M3 MacBook Air just does poorly pretty much across the board here. Not a good purchase at this point. If you're thinking about buying that one used, I would not. I would not. I'd rather get the M2. Even the M1 does really well here, which was just an outlier machine. It's still super capable. I would get the 16 gigabyte or even bigger. Come in bigger size? I don't remember actually anymore. If you find that used though, you might be getting a pretty decent machine there. Oh, this is weird. Am I about to just eat my words here? Yeah, the thinking version of Quen 3 4B. See, all these are different. Every time you run a different model with different quantization, you get different results for different tasks. It's like, what do you do? What do you do? You take the average, I guess. But uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to keep track of these things, you know? I feel for you. I feel for you, people. Anyway, the M4 does really well here, but the M3 also does pretty well here, even though it wasn't doing well in the other ones. Medium programming. This is the thinking model, and it does 30 tokens per second, so a little bit less than the non-thinking version. The M3 though does pretty well here. 23 tokens per second, the M2 17 and the M1 18. You don't need to remember these because all this data is available on my GitHub. I'll link to that down below. And to round this off, we've got some budget machines here that are still quite capable of running these models. And depending on how you architect your projects, your automated solutions, your agentic workflows, these are going to be quite useful. So do not discount budget machines or mini PCs. Now, if you're interested in seeing how a bigger machine like the M3 Ultra does in these tasks, watch this video over here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.